Okay, this is uh, top-down trading. Just a definition. Uh, top-down trading is an investment approach, uh, pretty much self-explanatory, but uh, it's good to state it. We start by looking at the big picture, the market itself, and to see what's going on in the market here. I'm not looking to say whether it's uh, bullish or bearish. I just want to know where it is. Uh, you know, I don't want to restrict what I'm doing. I want to know, am I in a trading range? Is it in a trend up or trend down? That's really what we're looking for in the, in the support and resistance areas. Once we've uh, had a look at the market, uh, we're going to have a look at the industry sectors. In this case, we're going to be looking at industry groups. Just to give you an idea, some people talk about sectors, some talk about groups. Um, they're kind of interchangeable. Within AIQ, we use both sectors and groups. So, for example, uh, the automobile sector would contain groups of stocks like the automobile parts, automobile manufacturers. I tend to stick with going and bypassing the sector level because my time is very short for doing these things. So when I'm doing analysis at what's called the sector level in, in generic terms, I'm really going straight to the group level. And again, we're going in there and I'm looking to see groups that might be outperforming the market or maybe those that are underperforming the market, groups that might be leading the market or those that might be lagging the market. We know overall the market has a particular direction, or it may be trending up, trending down, or, or in, a, in a trading range. But within the market, there are different uh, segments that are moving in different directions. Once we've had a look at uh, groups, and we have reports that allow us to analyze uh, groups that are in a particular direction, whether it's up or down, and we can go to those particular groups and drill down into the groups themselves to look at the stocks. And then it's a matter of looking at the stocks within those groups, shortlisting those for a further analysis before we make a trading decision. So market analysis, always looking for key supports and resistance levels, and we'll look at that in a second in the chart. And uh, look at the broad market indications, that's in the AIQ market log. Uh, for those of you who have not seen this before, we will be looking at that. And a look at the market expert rating. There's an expert rating system that uh, most of you who have used the software in the past are familiar with. Um, you know, it's a fixed system. Uh, it does provide a useful indication, uh, though it's not always 100% accurate. If it had been 100% accurate, we probably would never have released it. Uh, it's, as it is, it's a useful indication of uh, a possible change in direction. So I'm always wary of uh, when there's an expert rating, especially on the market itself. So those are the key things we look at uh, when we look at the market. I tend to make a note of what, uh, what I see on the market. I note down the uh, resistance levels and next support levels. And these are all useful in just uh, giving me an overall picture of where the market is. Once we're finished with that market analysis, that's the, the top end of our drill down from this top-down trading approach, uh, then we go and look at the group analysis. Again, I'll be using the AIQ reports. We have a, a great deal of uh, ways of slicing up the market as far as the groups are concerned. And we'll be looking at a group analysis report, looking in there for groups that lead or lag the market. And uh, again, looking at those groups going into those groups themselves and looking at the stocks in the group. The second point there, you know, the reason we go with this type of analysis is that most stocks in a group tend to move in a similar fashion. It's not true of every stock in there, but this cuts down on my analysis time. It means that I can find a group, the group index, uh, for example, again, if it had been uh, automobile manufacturers, I can look at that group and say, okay, maybe this is in a good trend up. Uh, when I go and look at the charts of the group itself and the stocks within the group, I can go ahead and be fairly certain that a lot of the stocks in there are doing exactly what the group is. So again, it cuts down the amount of time I have to uh, spend going through the analysis itself. As I mentioned, there's uh, groups that lead the market and those that lag the market. And you know, leading groups, those can be those that are already moving down while the market is still topping out 
or the ones that are lagging, the ones will continue up even when the market has turned over. And, and the reverse of that is true when the market's on the way down. So there is always short and long opportunities. Uh, you know, the old adage that uh, about 70% of a stock's movement is based upon the market is always something to keep in the back of the mind. So when you do your market determination, if the market's in a strong trend to the upside and you're thinking you want to go short, just bear in mind that there's always the possibility that you're fighting against the tide, you're fighting against the current. So you've got to watch out for that. But again, there's still shorting opportunities. There are always groups that are performing poorly. The money's poured out of those groups and are into the groups that are doing well. The final step is the stock analysis. As I mentioned uh, a second ago, top-down analysis takes less time, I find, to find a short list of candidates. It's almost like I'm beginning the confirmation process straight out of the gate. I look at the market, I find good groups. So I'm already in a situation where I know that if my group level uh, analysis indicates that this group is a great long candidate, then I know already I've got a level of confirmation before I get into the stocks themselves. Once I go and look at the stocks, it's a matter of determining you know, what is your entry criteria. And uh, we'll be using a couple of different things to look at uh, on entries. And again, once you've determined this is a stock that you want to either do more analysis on or you're going to actually enter into, uh, you can shortlist it and just do a couple of confirmation analysis based upon the indicators that you like. Or I'll show you the one I like. And uh, before you enter your position, be sure you know what your protective stocks and your exit strategy is. So those are the big things. If you don't have those protective stocks and the exit strategy in place, uh, you're pretty much at uh, the mercy of the market when you go into a position. And the final bit, of course, is is pulling the trigger. So let's start by uh, having a quick look at the market itself. I'm just going to stop the uh, sharing of uh, this PowerPoint. It will disappear from your screen. And I'm going to switch to sharing my computer screen. And in a second here, you will see the market chart come up on the screen. Okay, if you just let me know if you can see a uh, candlestick chart there uh, up on the screen. Oh, that's good to know. Thanks, Greg. This is where I start from usually every day on the top down, uh, S&P 500. Uh, the reason I start here is, you know, as the Dow itself is the Dow Industrials, you know, it's kind of a, uh, a limited type of market for us to analyze. I do look at the Nasdaq occasionally as well, but most of the stocks that I'm uh, that I'm going to be looking at and the group analysis I'm going to be doing is on the S&P 500. So it makes sense for me to start with the S&P 500 daily price chart. For me, uh, when I'm looking in here, the, the things I'm looking for are, are simple, straightforward. You know, where are we in the market at the moment? And it's pretty obvious where we still are right now. I'm going to put a trend line on here. This is usually what I do. Throw a trend line on the chart itself. Again, you don't have to be 100% accurate when you do these trend lines. There's a pretty good trend uh, to the upside still in place, pretty much at uh, 45 degrees. I put a trend line on the upper level here, and again, you don't have to be 100% accurate. What I'm looking for is to give me an idea of a trading range, and pretty much the market is trading within uh, this trading range. It does have some characteristics of uh, a rising wedge. If you don't know what that is, it's pretty much uh, it looks like a wedge that's rising to the upside, but it's narrowing towards the point. And you know, sometimes that's an indication that uh, things may break out to the downside. I also like to put on the uh, resistance and support levels. Right now, of course, um, the support levels are kind of around about 1115 on the uh, on the S&P in this sort of area here. So this gives me an idea of the of the most current support levels if things should pull back. Let me just draw that again for you. There we go.
So just on a on a charting side itself, um, you know, not taking into account what happened today, and which still keeps us uh, pretty much within this trading range. And uh, you know, we were down pretty good today, and uh, around about I think the 11:36 level. But uh, bear in mind, this is the analysis that I did last night. So there is still, as I say, a good trend to the upside in place, and we have been trading around in this uh, range that's been rising for a while now. If I go and look at the uh, Dow, I'm just going to change this chart over to the Dow and bring it up full screen for you. Just to let you know, I mentioned about expert ratings. You know, they're they're an indication. They're not always accurate. Uh, they do just at least give us a view of what might be going on out there. Uh, I have this ER button in the bottom left-hand corner here, and when I click on this, it actually takes me back to the most recent expert rating on the chart itself which was a uh, 96 sell signal back here. Doesn't look like a great rating at the moment since the market's been going up since then. Um, expert ratings, when you see those on the market, you just have to be aware that uh, these expert ratings tend to be anticipatory. So they tend to be early and you have to use a confirmation with an indicator that's not part of the system itself. And this is the way it was designed by Dr. Smith. And in this case, the recommended indicator is the phase. The phase indicator is uh, based around the MACDI. It's more like an MACDI histogram. And this particular indicator, when I switch it on here, you'll see it below the price chart there. What we normally need to see happen is an expert rating fires. We need to see the phase itself change from upside to the downside after this rating has fired. So in this case, we haven't seen much uh, confirmation of this happening, although there was uh, on this date here, which is right here, there was a uh, move to the downside a little bit right there. So again, there's some indications that, uh, that we may be you know, going out a little too far on this move up on the market, but uh, we're still pretty much in this trading range at the moment. So support levels around about uh, uh, on the Dow itself are very similar here. We're looking at uh, around about 10,500. So having looked at the charts of uh, both the S&P 500 and the Dow itself, uh, I then move on and have a look into the AIQ reports where we have tools that allow us to analyze the whole market using not only looking at the stocks and the groups, but uh, also examining uh, all of the stocks within a particular market area uh, based upon different technical indicators. Now, these AIQ reports, for those of you who don't have uh, Trading Expert Pro, are automatically generated for me every night when I update my data after the market closes. Uh, I would have liked to have done data for today, uh, Friday the 15th, but it takes a while for the data to be cleaned and sorted through, and it's not normally ready until 7 p.m. Eastern. So uh, we're working on data from yesterday evening. So this is AIQ reports. Those of you who have not seen this before, we have stock, group, sector, mutual fund, both daily and weekly reports available. There's a great uh, report that you can see on the screen here. Uh, it's the summary report. Uh, it's called the market log. This is where it is right here. I have it for 0114. What you're looking at on the screen here is a nice little snapshot that's configured uh, automatically to, to analyze the S&P 500 and also to give me some market stats overall. And I come in here to just give myself an overall picture. What you can probably see up in the uh, left-hand corner here, let me just see if I can uh, indicate that to you. Are you able to see my mouse cursor moving around, by the way, everybody? Sometimes that doesn't get broadcast. This is good news. Great. Thank you. So where I've got the mouse right now, uh, there's that expert rating. The most recent expert rating on the market, or the first expert rating that we had, was a 95 to the downside. It was 18 days ago. And that one's still in place, although we haven't seen any movement. So it doesn't look to me like it's a, a relevant rating now. If it hasn't happened within 10 days, you can forget it. This rating is not working. And again, it's a price phase that would confirm that going to the downside. 
the rating itself is based upon the Dow Jones Industrial Index and breadth analysis off the New York Stock Exchange. So it is confined to that sort of analysis. And uh, over the years, what we found is is that the breadth analysis isn't as good as it used to be, uh, partly because there's a, a lot of different types of instruments that are traded on the New York Stock Exchange uh, that tend to make the, the, the divergencies we were looking for between the breadth and the index itself no longer valid. So bear in mind the expert rating, it's still in there. We haven't taken it out. It's been in there for years, but it, it, it's just an indication, and I don't use it as something as, you know, as, as the centerpiece of my analysis. The things I do look at, though, are these nice numbers here. You see where it says WAL 3070? Well, WAL stands for Weighted Action List. A Weighted Action List actually analyzes all our stocks in my universe. In this case, it's the S&P 500 stocks, uh, looking for confirmed uh, expert ratings on the stocks themselves. If it's an upside expert rating, then the weighting is on the left-hand side. If it's a downside, then it's on the right hand side and what this is is pretty much it's a percentage of stocks with ratings saying they're going to go up and the percentage of stocks with ratings saying they're going to go down 30 percent of the stocks in the S&P 500 have signals to the upside but 70 percent to the downside so that tells me there's a little bit of weakness there uh, in the marketplace itself but most of the time this is fairly neutral when it gets into uh, an imbalance usually between 30 to 70 and then 2080, those sorts of levels, it's uh, a sign that there may be, um, you know, we're getting near the end or we're exhausting this run to the upside. So again, so we're still in the trend up, and that weighted action list there tells me there's been some signals that are more weighted to the downside. The U.S. area here, where it says unconfirmed, signals 45, 55. That's again on the expert rating without, uh, without any um, uh, confirmation. It's kind of a neutral reading. So when I see imbalances in either of these areas, there, there's an indication that there may be a change that's coming up. For this particular session, groups are where I'm interested, and this is where I get a nice idea of what's going on. See, I've got a group score here, 81 plus and 19 minus. What that means is, is that 81% of my groups, in this case the groups of the S&P 500 groups, are in a trend to the upside, and 19% are in a trend to the downside. And that's a nice little snapshot right there of where we are in the market. The next area to it where it says group delta, this tells me how it's changed from the previous day. What I'm looking at there is that 24% of groups have moved upwards in their trend, or their trend has moved up, but 76% have moved down. So what that means is, is that there are more groups moving to the upside, uh, have changed to the upside, uh, to the downside, sorry, than to the upside. So 24% have changed up, but 76% have changed down. And remember the S&P 500, we're, we're talking about 90 or so groups altogether. So again, that's a snapshot that tells me, yeah, the groups are in strong trend, but there is some rolling over going on at the moment. The other area in the market log here gives me a nice little snapshot based on, on a selection of indicators. I've got two areas in here. I've got a market plot, which is based upon the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average for most of these indicators, and then also upon measurements of the breadth of the New York market. So, for example, here, MACD, uh, the MD oscillator, directional movement, all of these indicators all the way down to the uh, MFRSI are all based upon the price action on the Dow. And the more bullish, the more arrows you get on the bullish side, the same on the bearish. So we're seeing mostly bullish side as far as the uh, Dow is concerned. Some of the indicators down here, like advanced decline line and the new high, new lows, are based upon all of the stocks in the New York Stock Exchange. So this gives me a little bit of snapshot as well of, of what the overall market's doing. And again, as you can see, it's mostly bullish overall. We are seeing, uh, you know, mostly bullish, especially like the new high and new low. The number of stocks that are still making new highs is is pretty significant. On this side here, I've got the access plot. Access plot is a measurement of all the stocks in the S&P 500, and it queries them based upon all these indicators, how bullish and bearish they are. A little bit of a different picture here. You notice that uh, the MACD, the uh, directional movement, quite a lot of these indicators are showing bearish tendencies. 
some of them money flow uh, moving average 21 day and again moving average 100 and 200 you're seeing some some switching backwards and forwards here between bullish and bearish you know when the market's very very strong and still going up to the upside strongly you get a lot more on the bullish side so a little cautionary uh, note in there I just looked again it's a snapshot view I'm seeing you know a little bit of pullback coming in on the market here based upon these indicators so again, I'm, I don't normally look to see if I'm going to be bullish or bearish. I just want to know where the market is and what I'm looking at. So overall, we are seeing a little bit of rolling over, though the trend is still good to the upside. Now, given that, uh, you know, where we are in the marketplace, uh, the next step in my process is to go straight to the group reports. Uh, in the early part of the session here, I mentioned we've got sector and group reports. Sectors are just collections of groups underneath uh, a global umbrella. So, like automobile sector will contain automobile parts and also automobile manufacturers. Uh, you're quite welcome to start at the sector level. Uh, it just means that you find a sector, you then got to drill down to the group before you get down to the stock. Uh, I like going straight to the groups. It cuts out that separate uh, step in there because within the groups themselves, uh, I can then go straight to the stocks once I've identified the strong groups. So what we'll do is we'll open up the group reports. You can see there's a substantial list of different reports in here. There are many other ways of uh, looking at the market as far as the group level is concerned and identifying groups doing different things. Uh, we're going to keep it simple. This is a straightforward process and you know one of the reasons of doing this session is, is that we tend to get overcomplicated. I've got overcomplicated with humongous trading systems that go through a great deal of analysis to get down to a result and uh, there are just some real basic straightforward um, um, processes you can go through that can avoid doing that you don't have to go through this sort of process of building this massive trading system a top-down analysis going from market to group to stock is is fairly straightforward so we're going to look at the group analysis report this report actually has every group in the S&P 500 in here the ticker itself is uh, is a eight character abbreviation of the group, uh, and you can see the group names up on the screen there. Uh, these groups are ranked from the top to the bottom in this report, so every group, as I say, is in here, and they're ranked based upon a trend score system. The trend score system uses several different uh, indicators to measure the strength of the trend within a group itself. Those that are, have 199, you can see those at the top in the in the report itself are the groups that are in a strong trend to the upside. Conversely, if I scroll down to the bottom here, you'll see the numbers in parentheses or in brackets for our for our UK friends. Uh, these are the groups that are in a trend to the downside. The higher the number is, the stronger the trend is. So when you look down the bottom of this report here, right at the bottom here, we have uh, paper packaging, which has a negative 100 trend. So that's, that's, that particular group is in a trend to the downside. What we're going to do is, given the market's in a strong trend, we'll, we'll look at both sides of the market because there's, there's no reason not to look at uh, both long and short candidates. But given we have a large number of stocks and a large number of groups and a trend to the upside, what we can do here is we can look at the strong trending groups themselves and then drill down and have a look at stocks in there for, uh, for possible re-entry positions back into the trend itself. First thing I want to bear to, to just show you here before we do that is the information that's also provided in the uh, group analysis report is very helpful uh, when you're coming in here. I don't look at any more than the top 10 groups in here. I mean, you, you could spend all day going through this and drilling down. There's plenty of candidates in those groups. There's a column here called number, and that's the number of stocks within a group. You probably noticed here the first two groups have only got one stock in them each, and it's just the way group analysis is. Groups are designed uh, on a fundamental basis on whatever industry a particular stock is in. This group structure was designed, uh, this is standard and pause group structure, it's freely available. And there are about 15, 20 groups that only have one stock. So when you look at the group itself uh, for, uh, for analysis purposes, when there's only one stock in there, the group looks exactly the same. 
same as the stock. By looking at uh, the top 10 here, and it's not always going to be the top 10 because I'm always looking for those in the strongest uh, trend. Here I could go all the way down to the 95 level. I mean, this is a, when the market's more in a in a consolidated phase. You may only have six or seven uh, between 100 and 95. I mean, I don't need to go all the way down to 95. There's a huge number of candidates right at the top of the list here. So pick those that are, have the strongest trend and go look at those groups themselves. Within the group, uh, to say the number of stocks is in there, uh, there's also information based upon the component stocks and how they're performing on four different uh, indicators here, up percentage, down percentage, and uh, money flow, uh, sorry, MACD oscillator and a directional movement indicator. This just gives me a quick view within a group of how the stocks are performing, the percentage of stocks that are have it advancing um, in, based upon these indicators. Again, it's, it's not something I spend a lot of time uh, looking at. I'm more interested in the trend score and going straight to those groups to see how they're performing. So what we'll do, we've got uh, about 30 minutes left. Let's go in and have a look and see what these groups are looking at. First group there is uh, Office Electronics. There's only got one stock in there. All I need to do is just click on the uh, chart ticker button up here and it'll pop it into my chart here. And I'm going to throw on a couple of indicators, and I've got a 10-day and a 21-day moving average. These are nice little indicators, uh, especially if you want to buy back into a trend. And I also like the MACD, so that's the other indicator I'll throw on there. So again, as soon as you get into looking at the uh, group level itself, you can see this particular group is in a good strong trend to the upside. There may be an opportunity to get back into this group. There's only one stock in here, so we're going to pop down and go straight into Xerox, which is the only stock in there. Right now, it looks like uh, for a re-entry, you probably need to pull back um, from its current levels. So I would skip straight past this one. When we find one, by the way, that I'm uh, more interested in, we're going to tag it to a list, and you'll see that in a moment. So this is simple as this. I'm really looking for a re-entry point. This one, I'm going to skip straight past, go straight back to my reports, go to my second group. Second group is uh, automobile parts. It's only got uh, one stock in it again. Let it just refresh on the screen there for you. I click on this down arrow here. It takes me down into the group level itself. And what I'm going to do to show you is, is press the enter key on the keyboard, and you'll see the group structure on the right-hand side there. So again, this one's only got one stock in here. It's in a strong trend to the upside. And again, there's a possible entry point uh, for a pullback maybe on the 10-day moving average because this one, again, has been following mostly on the 10-day, but uh, it also pulled back to the 21-day. So again, the, you know, the MAC details me it's strong to the upside, but I don't see a very good entry point on this. Um, sometimes uh, you might want to tag these to wait for it to pull back. I don't bother doing that because it'll appear again on a another day. If I have money that I need to put in the market and this is pulled back a little bit to the uh, upper trend line, it will appear again in my uh, group analysis report somewhere along the way or there will be other candidates. Uh, let's go look at the third one, gaming. Again, just going to go chart ticker on this. So this one has a couple of stocks in it. Casino gaming, lottery, and um, something else. Again, this one looks pretty good. We have had a, a pullback here, almost a pullback to the 10-day uh, moving average. So this one might be a good uh, candidate uh, as a group. So we'll drill down. Again, I can just click this Explore down. It goes straight down. And there's one of my favorite companies, Internet Game Technology, uh, except it's spelled Internet in here. Spelling mistake. We better fix that. Uh, again, this is a nice one. It's pulled back to its 10-day moving average. There's a possibility of getting in here on this one. Uh, I like the look of this stock. So use MACD here. I look here on the MACD for anything that's out of place. Um, any of you who follow Dale Wheatley, he's a big Divergence fan. I've always used Divergence of MACD as as a warning sign. Uh, if I've seen the crossover and it's moving in sync where it is 
here, that's fine. It tells me, you know, this is a reasonable candidate. So this is one that uh, I would shortlist uh, as a possible candidate. You know, the group's very strong. You know, the market is still in that trend uh, to the upside. And, you know, there's a pullback coming here to the 10 day. So maybe we'll look for an entry around about, uh, you know, in this 19.4 zone. So to come back, if I want to put this on the short list while I continue my analysis, what I do is I tag it. So I have the ability up on the menu here, which says tag list. And first thing I would do is set a tag list. As it happens, I've already created one. And normally, you just click on new. And I label this tag list to indicate exactly what it is that I'm doing and where I am. So in this case, remember, these were good trending groups strong to the upside. So I created a tag list long 115 because I was doing this for this morning. And this tag list then is where I'm going to throw the stock. And it will make a short list of stocks for me to go through later for possible entry positions. So I've made that tag list. I know that's the tag list I'm in right now. All I need to do is when I reach a candidate stock that I want to um, you know, possibly buy, all I have to do is go up on the menu here and actually tag it. And there's this little ticket here that says add to tag list. I do that and it says, oh yeah, you want to add it to this tag list? You bet. So that's uh, one that's in there. The second stock that's uh, in this strong group was uh, Win. It looks like, uh, let me just press A. The A key, by the way, I get this, we get this question a lot. You see the cursor, the vertical cursor on the right-hand side here? If you hit your A key, it'll, uh, there's my arrow. You hit the A key, it'll get rid of it. And you hit the A key again, it brings it back. It's a little toggle. The win is kind of just pulled away a bit. Uh, there's a possibility you might get in a little bit later if it pulls back, but uh, I think I'll skip that one. Back over to the group report. And go straight to my next group, which is uh, engineering and construction. There's a couple of stocks in there. Nice, strong-looking group again to the upside. Has a nice little pullback comeback here. So I like the look of that, and it's trailed and bounced off the 10-day there. And the MACD is looking really good, too. Let's go down and have a look at the uh, candidates in there. First one is Fluorcorp. Again, it's playing right along the 10-day uh, line here. be nice for an entry point if it was back to this sort of level here. So if it pulled back here, let's go look at the next one. This one's looking nice. This one's almost all the way back to the 10-day again. And I do like that 10-day. It's a very good uh, moving average for an entry position here. So this one's a possible. I'll uh, put it onto my tag list. Again, the MACD is nicely in sync. There's no uh, divergences to warn me. So I'm going to hit that tag button again and throw him into my list. Again, it's a long candidate, so we've got a couple in there already. Back into my uh, report again. Next one on the list is uh, construction and farm machinery. Let's go uh, have a look at that one. Again, a good, strong-looking MACDI, very strong to the, um, in sync. Uh, again, this one here, we've had this little consolidation and pullback going on. And it's not quite back towards where I need it to be uh, for re-entry on the 10-day. And the last time on the 10-day, it went straight through it and bounced off the 21-day. So I'm going to skip that one. I've got plenty more to look at. I didn't even go down into the uh, stock level. Uh, the group itself gives me enough indication. Uh, next one in there. So this will be one, two, this will be number six. You can see it doesn't take a lot of time to go down and, uh, you know, with the analysis focuses us, focuses us where we want to be. So the next one is a 99 trend store, still very strong. It's got four candidate stocks in here. This one again, this, notice the 10-day and the 21-day have been moving in sync along here. It's been running along that 21-day line. It fell down a couple of times over here, but uh, let's just have a quick look in this group. Again, there's not much as far as uh, pullback for a re-entry right at this moment. What I wanted to show you here was just how well most stocks follow the group. I mean, GE looks very similar or fairly similar to the group itself. 
again, there's no re-entry candidate for, in my mind at the moment on that one. This looks a little better. The 3M is uh, it's definitely played along the 10-day uh, the line. I mean, the low here pulled back to the 21-day, but the close has always been at the 10-day uh, line itself. This one looks kind of good, but uh, the MACD has crossed over and has rolled down, so I'll skip straight past that one. I don't like to see that. Ah, uh, yes, Textron. This was an interesting stock. Uh, very, very wide bar on this day. Again, that's uh, not something I'm going to look at. It hasn't come back. Uh, it's played down here at the 10-day and dropped down there a few times. Uh, we'll skip right past that one. Now, again, this one has pulled all the way down below the 21 and the 10-day a few times. So, again, that group, you know, just from the group chart, it wasn't something that uh, was of great interest to me. So, I moved straight on to the next one. So, we've got a couple of candidate stocks already. So, um, you know, depends how many candidate stocks you, you need to fill positions. If you've already filled three or four positions and you're only looking for six, you're already done. You've got a couple of candidates to go with. Now, this group, uh, Banks Regional, was the next one. Again, this one's had a pretty good flyaway from its 10-day and its 21-day moving average, so it's doing pretty strongly. Again, the MACD is in sync, but I don't like the look of this down here. It's definitely poured back through both those moving averages on a, on a couple of events. So I'm going to skip that group completely and uh, move on to the next one, which is uh, Packaged Foods. This one has uh, a large number of stocks in here. Let's have a look at this one. This is not too bad. Again, you need a pullback for your re-entry on this one. And it's uh, given the number of stocks that are in there, there may be some stocks that have already poured back. So let's have a quick look in this group. The MACD looks good for me. First stock in there, Conagra. Now we'll skip past that one. It's got this big area that's pulled back down here. Again, I'm looking for some of the buy back into the trend. Here's a case where we have a stock that's moving or either leading or lagging the group, and it's uh, Campbell's. Since this is long candidates, we don't want to go anywhere near that at the moment. This is a nice looking stock. Dean Foods. Notice how it's uh, re-entry points here and here. This is looking good. It's just hit the line here. There's a possibility of a re-entry on that one. The MACD is kind of flattened out. Uh, it's running right along the signal line there. So I'm going to add that one to my uh, tag list as a possible candidate. Again, just hit that tag button and click OK. Wow, this is a great General Mills. Now, isn't that a good-looking uh, trending stock? The MACD is kind of... Uh, it's down below the uh, signal line at the moment, but it has turned back up, so that's not too bad. This one, again, you know, the 10 days started to turn down. We might have missed out on the move on that. It's got a beautiful trend to it, but uh, I'm looking for something where I can see a, a really good pullback to get back in. So we'll skip that one. Heinz, MACDs right the way down here. Look at that divergence. Go straight past that, not even interested. Oh, uh, yes, Hormel's been kind of flat, so straight out of that one at the moment. Hershey Foods keeps popping its way down below the 21-day. So, again, I can't see, you know, it does find a little bit of support here on the 21-day, although here it's kind of blew its way all the way down. So, even though the MACD is good on that one, I'll skip on that. And you got Kellogg's and Sinan, a little bit of a resistance level right here which is kind of interesting look at that resistance level at the top there Let me put a second trend line you can see it better there we go so more than likely uh, today it went all the way back down and uh, for the probably that's the what first second third fourth time it's hit that resistance we're looking for long candidates so we'll be skipping this uh, Tim, yes, the uh, question was, will this be archived? Yes, it will. i got the recording going, and I'll email everybody the uh, archive right after that. Probably be, um, actually, I'll probably get it done today. If not, it'll be tomorrow, even though it's Saturday. 
nice looking chart here on craft despite the gap in here this one's definitely poured back again to the line and there's a possible re-entry on that one the macd is good as well and it tends to follow along the moving average very nicely that one i'm going to tag i like the look of that MKC uh, seems to have blown away and headed off into the distance. There's uh, no re-entry right at the moment. Skip right past that one. It's nowhere near a re-entry point. Uh, SJM, uh, MACD's tanking. Don't like that. If I see that, that divergence, and then skip right past it. Another one that's uh, MACD's really tanked quite badly. And this is broken through its moving averages many times, so not interested in that one. TSN's a nice looking one though, except for the fact that it's broken through those moving averages a couple of times here. Because it hasn't provided any support in this zone here, and again, you know, it doesn't look to me like it's, uh, I want to take the chance of it coming back to this line and hoping it bounce off when the last couple of times it blew right the way through. So we've looked at uh, back to the group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll do two more. And given the time constraints, we'll just do the long side today. By the way, the short candidates, it's the same process, but in, in reverse. Uh, so this is office equipment and supplies, although it's in a pretty good trend. Um, I don't like the way that this, this whole general trend in the previous area here. It's very strong in the, in the most recent month. Let me just move that over. But um, again, it doesn't look like it's an easy one for entry points right at this moment. And the last one to look at is aerospace, which looks very nice. Again, you've got some pretty good support along the 10-day uh, the line all the way up here. A couple of times back to the 21, so there's, this is a very nice uh, trending uh, group itself. I'm just going to have a look inside and see what sort of candidates are in here, because there may be some that are hit back on a re-entry point right now. Our first one's Boeing that's still sort of running away from uh, from a re-entry at the moment. We'll skip past that one. I'm using these left and right arrows, by the way, up here to, to move backwards and forwards. Or you can just click the ticker in the panel on the right there, but I like the arrows. There's uh, Rockwell. That's not a bad-looking stock. Uh, again, it looks like the trend's kind of shallowing out, but uh, there's a pretty good possibility of re-entry around here. The MACD, though, has kind of dropped to the downside, so I think we'll skip that one. General Dynamics. Now it's run away from the line. Uh, Goodrich Corporation. Well, it's cut through its 10 and 21 days, uh, so not interested in a, in a re-entry on that one. Again, the same with Honeywell here. It broke through both those lines. And again, remember, this is I'm looking for the re-entry point. If 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 it's done this in the last two moves, um, picking any of these as a re-entry point right now, it's probably not going to be a good idea. L3 Communications. Now that's an interesting stock. Look at the way it's followed all the way up on the uh, on the 10-day right there. That one I like. Tag him. The MACD's kind of rolled over a little bit, but uh, I think I'll just put him on the list. Now this one seems to have turned down. See the trend here seems to be uh, heading to the downside, so why fight it? So remember, you know, the group is the group is calculated by us, by AIQ, based upon the stocks that are in there. So what the stocks do makes what the group does. Uh, if the vast majority of the stocks are going up, uh, you can have one or two that are going down. So you'll see that type of thing happening, and this is the case with uh, Lockheed uh, Marietta. Uh, North up again, nice pattern, but uh, it's blown away again from the line itself. We may have that come up on another day uh, for a pullback. In fact, I bet tonight it might have pulled back. PCP is pretty good. There's a bit of support here on the 21 when it fell back there. It's a possible candidate to get back in, actually. I'll take that one. MACD's just kind of flattened out and turned over. It's not overly bad. We'll tag him.
Oh, that's a runaway. I have to wait for a pullback on that one. Don't want to try and fight that. And the last one in there, United Technologies. Uh, again, that one's uh, no pullback for a re-entry right at this moment. So not a bad stock. It's kind of held at the 21-day for a couple of months. That's pretty much how I go and find some candidates if I have any cash to uh, invest. Uh, I pop those stocks that looked good. You know, I, I'm still generally it's uh, looking for strong trending groups, and in a market that's still trending to the upside, looking for the best candidates within the group itself uh, for a re-entry. So once you're done with that, uh, I take the top ten. You can go further. Depends how much time you have, how many how many uh, entry candidates you're looking for. In this case. Remember, I had that list I created, which was called Long, uh, there he is, Long 115. By switching to this list up here, I now have those uh, six stocks that I uh, tagged. Let me get rid of this stock here and get rid of UTX. And again, you know, the next step in, in any of this process is uh, deciding on your entry point for the next morning. If you're, if you're going to go into, uh, you know, Dean Foods, you know, do I want to get in uh, just after the open? Am I going to put in a limit order and get myself in uh, sort of midway in the range from the previous day? Um, you know, again, those sorts of things are decisions that you, you'll have to make. Uh, protective stops, obviously, in a case like this, uh, we're buying on a pullback, so there's no point in putting a protective stop stop completely at the low of the previous day so allow a bit of wiggle room on that side um, you know seven to ten percent is good depends again on the stock itself uh, if you have a stock that will blow right through a seven percent move in one day and some stocks can do that there's no point in throwing yourself a, a too tight a stop uh, on the protective side uh, on the on the long side for for movers things that are moving up um, trailing stops are still the easiest again Again, if you put a 10% trading stop on the upside, uh, the vast majority of stocks I've used that for has been fine. Again, it's based upon um, you know what is it, what's the trading range like in a day. If you've got a stock that's really volatile and and in the last week has moved more than 10% uh, in one day, and um, putting a 10% trading stop, you might be stopped out straight away. So just bear those things in mind when uh, when you're looking for these types of uh, entry positions. But as you can see overall, the, the, the process here is we're using the tools uh, to analyze the market, to run away into the top performing groups uh, if we want to go long or the worst performing or trending down groups if we want to go short. And then using our charts and uh, technical analysis tools like the MACD and uh, just simple moving averages here to find candidates. It's it's going back to basics is really is really all this was. I'm just looking for re-entries. I'm not looking to to guess how long I'm going to be in a position. I'm not guessing if these are, sh you know, swing trades, short-term trades. Uh, some of them may end up being day trades. I'm just playing the market as it's presented to me. I'm buying into strong trending groups uh, in a market that is still in a trend. Uh, you know, I'm aware that there is some rolling over going on, but there's always going to be leading groups and lagging groups. So if I buy into a trend, it's going to take some time for some of this trend to come out of these groups and then come out of those stocks uh, if the market is turning over. So I'm trying to keep as many odds on, on my side as possible. And really, that's pretty much it. I mean, just doing this here, it took us from 3.25 my time to 3.55, so 30 minutes to go through and find half a dozen potential candidates. 